Hello, continuing on from the previous video where I demonstrated the use of the threads directive to use multiple threads for a rule. This is a video on the demonstration on using the resources directive for your rules. So a quick, some, this is just the basic boilerplate that I always use. Uh, there's also, I'm just going to run this first. So let's run this command to generate the test.txt file. So here you see there's the resources uh, directive info. Uh, the temp directive is um, specified by default. So here I'm just going to show resources uh, temp there. And uh, if I rerun this, I'm echoing hello and then it temporary directory location to the output file. So if we have a look, this is the default value. So we can change this and there are, um, you can specify your own resources. So here to specify it, say, so say uh, mem mb as 100. And then I could also do resources dot mem mb. And then rerun this, and you see here the I'm specifying to use use 100 megabytes of memory, but this is this is just being uh, evaluated as a variable. It's not as previously explained in the previous video for the threads. This is just a variable. It's not actually limiting your rule to use 100 megabyte in this case. So this is just being variable. So now let's uh, use, make a real example where this, it ha on how you might use this. So here, I'm just going to, I've got a, one moment. So I'm running a Jupyter notebook. You don't, if you're not familiar with it, don't have to worry too much going to make a notebook I'm just it's a I'm just here to test some code so the example that we are going to use here is so I hope everyone's familiar with uh, restful API so rest API so uh, you can google to see what it is about uh, the specific example I'm going to use today is the ensemble rest API this is a database where they store um, lots of different information about uh, genomics. So here I've just got one example that I'm going to use, which uh, makes a REST API uh, get request to get a get some information about a particular uh, genomic variation. So this is a Python example code. So I'm going to copy this, and here. I've made a notebook just to test out the code. Let's just clean some of this. So I don't want this. And here, let's just change this as URL. Paste that here. We don't need the sys package. And just clean the code a bit the response and then decode it. Okay, so if I run this, so here we're using the request package to make the REST API request uh, on for this particular variation and the response object uh, stores a JSON data which we decode. So this is the data. So here, this is just the if we look at the type, it's just a dictionary. So here, what I want is just the position of the vari variable, this variable. So the position info is held in the mappings uh, key, which is a list. I'm just going to take the first one. Let's get the mappings. Uh, sorry for those who aren't familiar with genomics. Uh, I'm just going to get the the position of this var variable 
a genetic vari uh, variation on what chromosome it is and in what on what position base pair position on that chromosome so the seek region name is the chromosome that it's located in and let's just get the start position so here let's do let's get the pause and then this is going to be crumb so just get all of this into the same cell clean that up so we have name let's do print name chromosome and then position so this we're going to save into a file so I'm going to copy all of this and this is going to be my rule so here let's do import snake uh, sorry requests and then I'm going to make the rule uh, let's do let's make it query it's going to have an output so we're going to make an outputs folder and then uh, num.csv and this is going to use the run directive and then I'm going to paste the code here the Python code let's indent we're importing up here, so we don't need to import inside. Let's just clean some of this. And then here we're going to, with op open the output file as f. And then here f write the information. So let's do let's use the f string. So name, comma. Chromosome, comma, and then the position, and then a new line. So let's save that, and then let's run this. So let's do output uh, one dot csv. So so now we have so the run completed, and if we look at the file, this is just a example. So everything's hard coded. So it doesn't matter which uh, number I input. It doesn't matter which uh, wildcard I use. The content of the files will be the same. Uh, it's just for demonstrative purposes. So here, I've made this code. Now let's make a all rule, and then let's run a hundred of these. So output. Oh, I need to make this into a string num.csv and then expand that into a range of 100. So I'm going to remove the delete the outputs folder and then I'm going to use 100 threads 100 cores and try to run all of this at the same time. This is going to cause an error for some of them which I'll explain in a bit. So 100 rules are being submitted all at the same time. Most of them complete, but now we're getting some errors. So let's evaluate those errors. So here, so client error, too many requests for the URL. So to explain what this is, what's going on. So Ensemble, because it's a big database and it's, it's used by bioinformaticians all around the world, so they limit the number of requests that you can make. So uh, this is the GitHub page for this, which stores information about these uh, REST API. Here we can see they how many requests you are allowed to execute within a rate of limit. No, not this one. Uh, total number of rates, number of requests you can still make. Uh, so set back to hit and exceed the rate. Okay, so mm, I'm not sure if they have a particular sort of set limit on how many requests you can make at the same time, but there is a rate limit. So that's why the error is being caused. So if we look at the response code here, so 429, uh, too many requests. You have been rate limited, wait and retry. So the request 
uh, information is okay, but I'm making too many requests at the same time for this IP address. So that's why I'm getting this error and they are limiting me from making too many requests. So we don't, we would want a way to sort of limit ourselves if we know there's a, a limit like this that we need to adhere to. So what we could do is use the resources directive, resources. And then this, you can name it anything you want. I'm for, for, you know, it's informative in this case to call it rate limits. So I'm going to, that's what I'm going to call it. So I'm going to specify one. And then here I'm going to, when I'm running, uh, I'm going to delete this. So when I run this, now that I specify the query rule will take one rate limit resource. So here in the command line, if I do resources, and then I'm going to say rate limit is uh, five. So now if I run this, there will only be five query rule run at any given moment. So let me run that. Previously, when I executed it without the resources rule, you saw all of the jobs being submitted at the same time, so all of them running at the same time. But here now, I've limited SnakeMake to only run five query rule at the time. So now it's limiting itself, and we're not getting rate limited by the server, so everything is running smoothly. Just quickly pause the video until it finishes. So here, so all of the uh, the rules ran with no errors. You see here, all of them have the same content, but yeah. So that's what the resources rule is for. So about the resources, uh, just a bit more. You can find more information in the official documentation. Uh, go to the snake files and rules. And then just under threads, there's the resources info, and you can see, you can find more information here. Just before we end, I want to go over, uh, so instead of hard coding the value, you can also give the, give it a function, a callable to the, the value of the resource as well. So you can read more about the resources directive in here. So before I end, what I wanted to um, uh, give you a heads up on is the there are three standard resources. So, so for total memory and then the disk usage and the temp temporary directive uh, directory. So I will go over this in hopefully in the next video. In the next video, I'm hoping to um, make a video about using the cluster so HPC clusters like slam or uh, some grid engine uh, job schedulers basically so how to use uh, snake make so that snake make submits the rules as a job for the job uh, clusters so these are the three standard resources uh, which can be specified and I'll go over these uh, in the next video. But uh, so temporary directory is one of the sort of important ones, I guess, uh, which you can read more about here because this uh, variable is being used for all of the temporary directory location for all of this uh, underlying scripts that you are using. And the memory uh, resource will be extensively extensively covered in the next video hopefully but again this is just uh, it's not much different from what's being used in this case where where the rule I've specified to use a certain number of that resource and when I'm running the workflow I specify the maximum number of that resource that I want to use for the workflow. So there's not much difference. So um, other than 
the special functionality of the mem mb because uh, when submitting it as a kubernetes job it uses that exact uh, variable name so that's there's additionals of uh, caveats you may, might need to be aware of but it's uh, functionality wise it's the same uh, temporary director uh, directory is different from the rest I guess but also you can read more about it here and okay so that's it uh, thank you very much if you have any other questions you can leave down a comment uh, like and subscribe if this was helpful and just leave a comment if you have any sort of uh, ideas uh, you need something you need help with a topic that you might want covered uh, I'll think about whether it will be okay to do that and make a video of it okay thank you